can do whatever they want in that, in that game. Yeah. And some, there's some algorithmic management or unmanagement of that movement. Or you can also call it just a community with a protocol. And it can lead to decentralized co-creation, decentralized cooperation. Um, now, what's, what's, the, what's the importance of the, the, the new feature of that kind of movement uh, on top of what we already have in the open source uh, community? Is it the ability to bring value in the operation, which is related also to the trustless mechanism of the blockchain, which I will talk about. But you can also add uh, value to the equations so that millions of people that collaborate or cooperate in some way can also share between them a uh, hard measure value. And that's another thing uh, beyond what we already have before. Okay, so what, what do I mean by protocol? Again, roughly, very roughly. So it's a set of rules, but algorithm set of rules or semi-algorithmic set of rules. Uh, you can know, some people probably in the prefer to think about it some sort of algorithmic governance. And also, you can also, from the uh, eco economical perspective, you can think of this as an algorithmic economy, which lets you distribute value between peers. Okay, so I claim that basically, if you want to well define what DAO is, you need to define two things. You need to define what is the state of DAO, and what is the protocol. So what do I mean by state? What, what is DAO? DAO stands again for Decentralized Autonomous Organization, which is what I try to roughly, and I will get more details, roughly say that it's basically an algorithmic movement of free actors. So let's say a million people are playing together according to some predefined rules and doing something together. Maybe, maybe insuring each other, decentralized insurance, for example. Okay? Okay, so to, to well define DAO, you need to define the state of the DAO and the protocol of the DAO. So what do I mean by state? So basically state is the, all the information that you account for. Okay, so that's the, let's call it DAO state. That's a DAO state. Now, there's also a physical state. So the physical state as a physicist is just the, all of the information that we can extract from the current moment. That's the physical state. Now, it doesn't have to be the same, okay? So you can have two different physical states. For example, let's say that uh, we have two different states, which in terms of value and contribution are just the same, but in one state, Ellis and Bob are friends, in the second state, state Ellis and Bob are enemies. Now maybe your protocols do not distinguish between those two kind of states. So it will be one DAO state with two physical states. Now of course, any, any of you understands that if Ellis and Bob are enemies, there is more information here that might be valuable for the network. So ideally, you would aspire that this DAO state will be as close as possible to the physical state. Okay? Or in another way, the governance machine that you are developing will be able to extract as much information on the reality that it can uh, extract. Okay? And what do we mean by protocol? So basically a protocol is just a black box. You're entering a state A to the black box, black box, and then you're getting state B. Now any such operation is ju just any shift, any movement, any addition of information to the old state. So we are living in uh, some state A, and then there is a new item. Someone adds a contribution, someone adds a post, or adds, adds a feedback, or doing any action, and then the protocol uh, bring us to state B according uh, to the predefined set of rules. Okay? Now, uh, people in the last year, all these concepts are fairly new, just from the last year. Uh, I don't think you'll find this kind of presentation anywhere. This is kind of my uh, take on it. I think the physicist take on that. Uh, and, and many different protocols were suggested. And I will take the, the, the view of taking the minimal, most minimal scheme of a protocol. And I also consider it to be the most natural or biomimic uh, scheme. In that sense, I, I, I will try to eliminate any unnecessary layer of the protocol, okay? In particular, a lot of protocols try to discuss decision making, and I would like to eliminate any unnecessary decision making uh, protocol. So I claim that the main thing to be defined by the protocol is only the value distribution. Okay? Value distribution means that now we are millions of people, we are free actors, anyone can uh, contribute in any way she wants to contribute. Okay? And the community needs to evaluate that contribution and distribute value in terms of tokens 
to that actor. Okay. Now here, where, where it comes comes in the crypto tokens, that's that's the way to distribute value for that contributor in terms of crypto tokens, and that's where enters the programmable blockchain and, for example, Ethereum. Now, still, we have to have one more ingredient of the protocol. Well, okay, we don't have to. We can also stay without the second one. That would be really the minimal scheme. But we might like to have a second part of the protocol, which is changing the protocol protocol, right? Because we, we don't have the aspiration to think that, we, we don't think that we actually have the ultimate protocol of day one. So we want to have a, a, a evolutionary a mechanism a, for the protocol to, a, not to naturally evolve it's just like a, a machine learning, but here it's community learning. Okay, the community as a whole learns to to evolve the protocol to a better place. And uh, this is very simple, basically. So the changing the protocol, protocol you, can, you can think of this as a weighted voting. It's a generalization of voting and democratic voting. In a weighted voting, not all voices are equal. Maybe some people are more reputable, reputable. Maybe some people are more knowledgeable, skillful, and so on. So we have a weighted voting, and we need to somehow to define the weight for people. Let me give you all. Let me now wrap all this in one example. So I'm just claiming that everything I just said, Bitcoin says, is one very, very degenerate and simple example. So firstly, there is a distribution protocol, and what is a distribution protocol? It's simply the mining algorithm. If you're doing such and such action, in that case mining, you're getting such and such rewards. That's the protocol. Of course, as we'll discuss later, that's a very degenerate and simple protocol because you can do many, many other actions that are not being received for. You, you don't receive for them any uh, bitcoins, which is unfortunate. Uh, do you have weighted voting in bitcoin? What do you think? Only by you ganging up. If you've got computing power, you mean? What? Sorry? Do you mean um, the agreement of all of the participants in the... So, so here I mean uh, deciding about what is the protocol. So I claim, yes, there is a way of voting about deciding what is the protocol, and it seems like by downloading the code. If I download code A, I vote for code A. If you download code B, you vote for code B. And we do we have weight? Yes, we do. What is our weight reputation in the system? It's simply our hashing power. Which I think is reasonable in some sense, but as unreasonable in many other senses. I mean, we don't really think that this should be the, the measure of your reputation, skillfulness, skillfulness etc. It helps to prevent frauds, but it's not definitely not an ultimate weight uh, mechanism. Okay. Okay. So what can trigger token distribution? Again, we are talking about millions of people cooperating on some actions, and we want to assign value for each contributor. So what kind of action trigger this assigning of value? So generally any action that people make should be triggering or can be trigger a distribution of tokens. But let's classify uh, these kind of triggers. So one, uh, so actually Bitcoin only covers number two. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. But the most gen generic action that you can assign tokens for is just contribution. Like uh, Alice is making a very valuable contribution to build the network. And we as a community, as a collective, we want to assign value for her contribution, right? Now this is a semi-algorithmic protocol because it has to involve the input of the community, which is not that, the non-algorithmic part. After the all sum of feedbacks of the community, you can take an algorithm and sum it up to give you a number. So it's semi-algorithmic. But you can also have fully algorithmic protocols where you just make an action and automatically assign the tokens. Uh, that's usually a uh, fit uh, for adoption. When you, when there is very specific action that you is, is desired, basically adopting the system. Yeah, maybe I'll say one more word about that. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, that can be fully algorithmic. That's the case in Bitcoin. By the way, why do we need adoption? Why, why do we need to reward adoption? Because the whole point of this decentralized application scheme is to take us from the Nash equilibrium of non competitiveness to the national equilibrium of competitiveness. There is no incentive to jump up against the Nash potential. So we give tokens, we give early adapters incentive just to, co just to cover up for that uh, natural tendency to, to stay non cooperative And thirdly, we can purchase tokens, but from whom? So generally we purchase it from the community. That's something that uh, doesn't exist anywhere. Yeah. 
Okay, so what's wrong about the, the Bitcoin protocols? I'll just speed up a little bit. Um, so firstly, approximately, uh, there are fixed volume uh, of tokens. And right, right now, there are you know, certain amount of tokens in the circulation, and that leads to high volatility. So if, if there's fluctuation in demand of supply, uh, uh, sorry, so supply is fixed, if there's a fluctuation in demand, there will be fluctuation in the rate of tokens, which we all experience, and that's uh, one of the biggest uh, barriers for adoption of the Bitcoin. So that's one problem. The second problem is that there is no reward for generic contribution. So, for example, mining is re being rewarded. So how about this, the mining miner sector? So it is fully saturated, fully saturated. How about the designing sector of Bitcoin? Or design. Well? Designing, coding. How many coders are, are coding full-time Bitcoin? <laughs> for four billion dollar economy with four, five, no, four, four to eight coders. How come? Because they're not getting incentivized directly. Okay. So this is a no reward for generic contribution, you see. Whereas no, no reward, there is no saturation of action. And also there is a limit token of uh, release to the system every 10 minutes, meaning that if you, even if you had a generic reward, you will be limited the volume of reward you're giving out or the growth adoption that you can go. So uh, very briefly, I will tell you about the next generation uh, DAO protocols. Basically, you, ha you should have a protocol that such that the community rewards any valuable contribution how to make that, that's a big, big question, uh, which we worked on in the last year and uh, feel that we, ha we are close to having a final answer, systematic answer. Uh, so, which means that you have need to have the centralized contribution evaluation protocol, again, same algorithm here. So, I'm doing action A, now the rest of the network can do feedback on my action and the network should be able to sum up this feedback and assign a value. And of course, the central reputation system, which leads to decentralized weighting, uh, weighted voting. We should have unlimited number of tokens supply distribution, but without uh, being diluting the system too much or at all, uh, which leads to a new kind of mechanism, which we call partial effect mechanism. I have two minutes to tell you about that. So, firstly, a, a fixed volume uh, versus a fixed rate. So. This is the economy that we all know from the Bitcoin space, fixed volume of economy, uh, fixed volume economy uh, with dynamically varying rate. It's, it leads to high volatility. It's good because there is incentive to be early, right? If the project succeeds, demand increases, demand increases, the rate increases. That's how we backwardly reward those early adopters. That's good. Uh, but there is limited distribution also. That's bad. So one and three are bad, two, or two is good. Now we can cure that by having a fixed rate or full peg mechanism which means that you fix the rate of tokens, some external value, you are allowing to people buy and sell the tokens for the same rate, that's a full peg mechanism, you are completely eliminating volatility, so that's good, so volatility, uh, sell and buy margin are the same, but however there are now there is no incentive to be early and also you cannot distribute any more tokens for contributors because you won't be, ha be, having, uh, you won't be able to back them with your stock anymore. So for that case, uh, for that reason, we have uh, made a partial peg mechanism where we have higher lower margin, which are different. Well, you're selling for higher margin, you're buying them back for lower margin. That's reducing volatility. The lower margin is fully defined by having a full reserve. So if now I distributed tokens to contributors, it just means I'm lowering lower margin and basically sharing the value of that system with more contributors. That's basically the idea. And eventually, the, the punchline of that mechanism is that you are allowing a dividend mechanism. So, for any new tokens which are distributed, issued, part of them are being released as a dividend to the rest of the community, and then brings brings back incentive to be early. So that's what exactly compensating for the for the early mechanism in Bitcoin in that new language. If you, if you, anyone of you here is physicist, physicist is, is, is analogous to having a, to, def, to define your physics in a, in a fixed energy frame or in the <laughs> chemical potential or temperature frame. Anyway, some more words about collective valuation. Um, just half a minute. So this, this, is, this is really the big thing. I will not elaborate on that. If you are interested, uh, you're welcome to come talk to me. Um, basically, it's kind of tweak crowd wisdom and mechanism, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, and lastly, just to say that uh, this, all this was about protocols. But really, to have decentralized uh, organization, the infrastructure should contain three things. A database, which many people are here are talking about, whether it's global consensus blockchain-wise or local consensus and other uh, complementary technologies. 
you have to have decentralized community protocols, which I just described, and, but you also need to have decentralized collaborative platform, which some people are here interested at. And that's basically what we are really building, a decentralized collaborative platform, a framework and home base for decentralization to be established, grow, and, and maintain in a seamless way. <laughs> just like as easy as it is today to open a Facebook page, Okay, or build a, a, a website on a WordPress, so you'll be able to, to establish a decentralized organization in five minutes and then kick it off. So stay tuned, or better, uh, you're welcome to join and be in touch. people but only to have predefined actions so you cannot yeah you cannot distribute Bitcoin for example for coders designers marketers etc. that's a problem so the, the question about it is oh, so Bitcoin is it like slice them up quite a lot um, how does that fit into I think one of the points in that slide was something about like there isn't effectively the value of bits you can subdivide Bitcoin is so much that Right, you can you can subdivide, but still there is no you, you can subdivide the, the, the Bitcoin. That's no problem, but still there is no mechanism for distribution of tokens for uh, generic contributors. Not sure, that's unless unless they ask for donations. Yeah. What? Unless yeah, unless but that's not the that's no, not no, systematic. I'm yeah, yeah. You can donate, but that's not systematic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I think one one thing that I always miss when people talk about Bitcoin is currencies and so on, is, um, I mean, as a, an economy or a college or a currency, for, uh, money has a, um, a significance within a context. And what I see that the cryptocurrencies make and these decentralized currencies is that we say, okay, they are very decentralized, but they, are, they have an universalist approach, like we say, this hard coding of rules, which in the end will be made uh, by a certain elite or a group of people that dominate, that can dominate the process because we know this happens at a larger level. So how to actually, is there any effort undergoing to actually address to be able to kind of, I don't know, federated coins or currencies or whatever that actually can, re can adapt to the different cultural contexts, to the different uh, the needs to actually have a meaning within the value of the communities that use these currencies? This is exactly what, what we do here. So each community has its own value and its own protocols that assign, I didn't tell you that, but the, the same tokens which are distributed in early stages later on are you being used to purchase the service or product created by that collaboration which entitles them value in the real world but a value which is directly related to the community and the protocols are not, of course they are designed by uh, skillful people but anyone can participate in changing the protocol maybe I don't understand the protocol but can I, I can tell you who I count on to understand the protocol for me so I think that that answers. I mean, I think that that answers to, you, to your requirements. Yeah. So if you have um, a the idea that you want to incentivize early adopters, how is that different from uh, having a strictly dominating res rushing thing? Where if, if I get in early, like the Bitcoin miners did, how do you prevent that from er eroding the future value to those people who haven't been born yet who still have to join this in the future? Right. So. I can comment two things about that. One is that uh, uh, you are asking about how to create a non-speculative or not non-ultra speculative economy, and one that stays valuable with, without yeah. creating so I, a period. So I, I claim that this kind of economy does stand in that requirement, at least to some extent. And secondly, I would say that you don't want to eliminate it at all because those people forget about Bitcoin for a second, because Bitcoin didn't have the right evaluation rewarding mm. uh, protocol. It was just you know giving arbitrary number of tokens. And I'm talking about giving away tokens which uh, signal or symbol the right value for contribution. So you actually supposed to have that a uh, contribution. And I'm saying that being early is not a bad thing to reward because contributing early is also risking early your energy, time, and money. So you should be contributing more. So I think I think it is a non-speculative economy actually. Yeah. 
in the, in the, in the broad, broad sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, about the, uh, maybe related to the, your question, I don't think that pagging um, will really work if you just say we're going to pag this and this is what the rules are. It's uh, comparable, I think, to in the Netherlands, they try to fix the rental prices saying if you've got a 30 square meter flat, that should cost 500 euros a month. What happens is that people say, okay, so the price is 500 because that's official, but you have to give me another 500 because, you know, if not, then it's take or leave it. So, so, this is, so this is a different way. So the, first is partial pegging, that's one. Secondly, the important thing is that dividend, dividend really dilutes. So that dividend really brings the rate down by, by, by pulling out the, the dividend. And thirdly, it's not really, uh, it's, not a, it's not an artificial pegging. It's really pegging because you release more tokens. So the upper margin, I didn't tell that, but the upper margin where you sell tokens, you're issuing new tokens. So you're actually selling the tokens by the community. So you're printing new tokens by the community so you're really bringing the rate down. So it's not artificial pegging. It's, it's not artificial pegging. It's really bringing the value of tokens to their uh, realistic value yeah. between, with, between those, those margins. And what if you have, what for the lower value, what if you have stopped say, giving out uh, tokens? So the lower value is defined. No, so the lower value is defined in the level that enables you to back them all. So that's a full reserve scheme. So it's again, it's, this is another <coughs> scheme. Which means that if you're now I'm cashing out my tokens, I do not change the lower value. Oh, so it's backed by amount. It's actually backed by amount that sits in a decentralized centralized wallet of the community, decentralized community wallet, which sits there just in the air on a smart contract. The only way to access the tokens from that wallet is by sending your tokens to the wallet. They are being burned out of circulation, and you get your part of the share. It's a decentralized community wallet. Yeah, decentralized uh, central bank. In history, there was always activity where there were developed a kind of very large inequality. I mean, it's a Zeef, a Mandelbrot law, if you have a ranking, yep. the, the devil shits on the biggest heap. Yeah. Well, that's the, the shortest description. <laughs> Will we have a 1% group in, with Bitcoins? Well, I think, I think, well, forget about Bitcoin, because I don't think the Bitcoin economy is correct. I think that's, but yeah, the, 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 the old, uh, economy, I think, I think, yeah, I think we will have, we will not have, well, sorry, a power law is a natural thing, okay? I don't think we should, I don't think we can, I don't think we should actually, uh, well, we, we've tried also that, but it didn't work. I don't think we are going to a democratic or, sorry, mm -hmm. communistic approach with uh, equal shares. I think we'll have this power law. It's just a matter of measure of how strong is the power law. And I think definitely this kind of economy drives to a more, uh, not equal, but a more a fair economy. A fa we call it fair share economy. So you're getting the value just according to the contribution you are making to the community. Make sure that it is dynamic. Dynamic, absolutely. I mean, that absolutely. people can lose yeah, money absolutely. and absolutely. get money. Absolutely. I mean, it should be fixed for a certain group. Right. That's the key. Absolutely. Last question. Uh, thanks. I, I just have one question, and, and I might not be following this well, but how are you going to account for responsibility? Uh, and I'm talking in terms of, if we're, if we're talking about um, env the environmental circumstance of where we are, the respons responsibility is a really important part of economic systems these days, and it's not like responsible innovation, so I'm just wondering how you're actually responsibility into this. Yeah, excellent question. So I don't have a short answer. I, I do have a long answer. So I encourage you to come speak with me. But I, I claim that this model will just cure that. I claim that we can use that model to make, basically you're adding, you see, you're adding value to be responsible in a way. And you can use that to actually cure ecological problems by incentivizing right actions. Uh, but we should talk about that, and that, that's one of our. We, we are building the platform, already building the the product, the DAO to populate that. One of my favorite is the footprint, and the DAO. Thanks. Thank you.